Al Mehmet, uh, Chairman of Migration Watch UK uh, and indeed a former immigration officer. He joins me now. And uh, very good to talk to you, uh, Al Mehmet. Thank you very much indeed for sparing the time. Um, your thoughts, our thoughts, first of all, with what these poor people went through and uh, what their families and, and loved ones are going through now. How can anyone be anything other than very sad? I'm particularly sad. It's tragic, but it's also avoidable. It was inevitable that something like this was going to happen. Let's not forget that two years ago, although they didn't actually drown, there were 39 Vietnamese nationals who died in the back of a lorry. So this is just trying to get across the channel illegally is a dangerous, very dangerous business. The only way it's going to stop, and everyone has alluded to it, but if we can show that crossing the channel and getting to the UK or being picked up by the British authorities does, is not tantamount to coming here and staying. People coming across the channel illegally must be held, must be returned. And the French really saying that somehow this is against their sovereign interest to, to do something like this, or indeed to work with us to, to stop people coming here. That's, that's a load of hogwash, frankly, because we, we have juxtaposed controls already. We have our officials at the border. If anyone coming to this country presents themselves and they're refused, they are still in France and sent back. Why it should make any difference if they've uh, set sail across the channel by the time we have spoken to them, I don't really follow. Excuse and that's me. The only excuse way me. Yeah. You're going to break it. Excuse me, just to clarify on that. So, where does the interception take place? In your view, it takes place at sea before then the would be migrants arrive on British soil, and then therefore they're still technically emanating from France? Well, and anyone who arrives in the UK and is denied, refused entry goes back to wherever they've come from. And that, that is something that is accepted, it's internationally accepted, and indeed we do it at the border. Uh, we do have our own people already with the juxtaposed controls. What we should be doing is, first of all, trying to make sure that they don't set sail in the first place. But if they do set sail and they're picked up, then they are returned. Mm. That's the only way that you will send the message back that it won't work. If you try to get into the UK illegally, it won't work. And the business of the traffickers will dry up. So what would happen so if the French, as it seems they would, would refuse to accept them back. They're arriving on, on British lifeboats, British Coast Guard boats. What happens then if the French say, no, you're, you're not landing here? Well, uh, that's clearly what they are saying. All, all I'm saying is that they have to be sensible about this. If they're serious about stopping this, uh, this unnecessary risk to life and limb, really, if they are serious about that, then they will accept people back. And, and I think that we should, our government should try harder, frankly, to persuade the French, and the French should also stop playing politics. We're playing politics with people's lives here. I'm just wondering, are there any international models for this? Are there any other countries that are doing this return policy successfully? Because, you know, we know that Greece and, and Italy are still getting thousands of migrants crossing... Uh, the seas crossing the Mediterranean onto their shores every year. Why, why aren't they doing this if it's possible? Well, the Poles are doing it with uh, Bela, Belarus. Uh, the Greeks are doing it. The Italians are doing it. And even the Spaniards are turning people back. They're not ta turning everyone back. And they're trying to stop people from entering the countries. But it's perfectly possible for us to return people to, to France, frankly. And I see no problem in people being returned to a safe 
a prosperous country, mm. democratic country like France. But, I mean, one of the biggest features, the biggest feature of all this, um, you know, the gangs, obviously, that, that are enabling it to happen, but it's the desperation of the people that want to come. And one could say, you know, obviously, the, the biggest disincentive to coming, as it is in the Mediterranean, in, in dangerous, flimsy vessels, is the fact that you, you might perish on the crossing, yet still people come. They are so desperate, so... You know, the disincentive of being sent back, as many people have been, particularly when we were still in the European Union and that was possible under the Dublin Accord, um, they still try again. Well, under the Dublin Accord, very few were actually sent back. There were more coming in our direction than went the other way and it took a very long time uh, to uh, make those arrangements. It, Dublin wasn't working. That is not an argument, I'm afraid. With regard to sending people back, well, we've got the capacity to hold people and return them in the way that uh, some countries don't. I see absolutely no reason why we should not be returning people to France if that's where they've come from. And, and people do. Yeah, if, if 25, 26,000 people have made it across safely and are still here, all but five of them, then, of course, you're going to be persuaded that the chances are you will make it, even though you know it's dangerous. You will still set out because you believe in your heart that you're going to be one of the 26,000, probably nearer 30,000 by the end of this year. OK, Alt Mehmet, very good talking to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.